This is breaking news. Right now, the New Jersey Forest Fire Service is providing an update on the West Milford wildfire. New Jersey Forest Fire Service, we're part of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, and I want to give you an update on this Canoose fire since late yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon and early evening, fire conditions continued to worsen. The temperatures were continuing to rise and winds increased. This caused fire to spot to the east of Echo Lake and start new fires. Uh, in response to this, we continued to drop water from our helicopter and our planes. And what we did was we brought in a strike team of five engines and a crew of firefighters from our southern two divisions in Division B and Division C. These folks worked through the night to conduct burnout operations and to track down and put out spot fires that were occurring along Echo Lake Road. The fire containment area has increased to almost 975 acres now and is currently 55% contained. John's gonna talk about some of the environmental conditions that are going on out there in terms of burning embers, dead trees, and Eric will talk about night operations and what we were able to successfully accomplish last night. I just want to say thank you to everyone here locally in terms of the local police, local e EMS, and the local residents have been wonderful here. They've been dropping off water, food. They've even reached out to me to offer their homes if we want to shower or we want to get a rest and sleep. Um, so it's really been a great place to work. Uh, we're proud of New Jersey. We're proud of what we do. Uh, and we're glad that we can all come together in these types of emergencies, work together efficiently, and keep everybody safe. Thank you. Good morning. John Cecil, Assistant Commissioner with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection uh, for State Parks, Forests, and Historic Sites. Um, so building off of what the Chief just offered there, um, huge thanks to all of the cooperating and agencies. We had quite a number of volunteer fire departments come in last night and provide st structural support as a number of resident residents voluntarily evacuated and left their homes, gave, gave us some more room to work, which was a great help. Um, Office of Emergency Management here in West Milford and the police department and fire department here um, providing huge support. So very appreciative for all the agencies that are collaborating and cooperating. Um, we, we really leveraged the full force of the New Jersey Forest Fire Service yesterday, reaching into our divisions B and C and bringing some additional staff support up here. We thought we had this in a good place yesterday and, and we're uh, in a pretty, pretty comfortable with where things were, as I stated yesterday afternoon. Um, but then we did run into some environmental conditions late yesterday that kind of changed the game a little bit for us. One of those significantly, which folks are seeing throughout the northern part of the state, is the impact of the dying ash trees. So we've had an infestation of emerald ash borer, an invasive bug over the last several years that has gotten into these trees and killed them. Those trees were fine, tend to be in some clusters in the forest, and when the fire's gotten into them, it's carried up into the tree, tree and into the tree tops to some degree, which is not something we're typically seeing in these Oak Hickory Forest fires. Usually, as I've mentioned before, they stay on the ground, they tend to be low and slow, but with the dying of the ash trees, that opportunity for the fire to climb up into those dead trees is what we started to see yesterday, and then the wind picking up and carrying those embers and spotting it out ahead of us is what's caused some of the problem. We also have some invasive species in here. We've got clumps of Japanese barberry. When, it, when flame gets on it, it kind of pops and um, creates a bit of fire for, for a little bit and some energy that doesn't help as well. So just want to stress with all of you and try to help the public understand, we've got a lot of environmental factors going on, right? We've got really warm conditions. We've got a changing climate. We've got the impact of these invasive plants and insects, all of that coming together to kind of exacerbate what we would typically expect as of normal fire conditions here in the Oak Hickory Forest. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to our Assistant Division Forest Fire Warden, give you an update on some of those details. All right, good morning everybody. Eric Weber, uh, Assistant Division Fire Warden for the New Jersey Forest Fire Service. So it's been a long night. Um, things changed a little bit yesterday, like the Chief mentioned earlier. Uh, those spot fires, those firebrands and embers he was talking about when he showed you guys. Um, one of those uh, crossed Echo Lake, landed into the forested area behind me to the east. As you can see, that new red area to the east of Echo Lake and uh, started us a new fire. Um, so 
similar tactics to what we were doing yesterday on that west side uh, in Division Alpha. Uh, direct and indirect handline was constructed and a burnout operation was initiated and crews burned all night long. Uh, trying to consume the unburned forest fuels between our established control line and the fire itself, uh, effectively stopping the forward progression of the fire. So uh, the line that was cut in, as you can see behind me, kind of dips in off of Macapin Road. Uh, crews worked really, really hard in there. It was all hands for um, establishing fire lines. Remember we talked yesterday about digging with those tools, doing it by hand. That's what they were doing up, up in there. Those, those folks were, the firefighters up there were working really, really hard last night. Uh, all the way at the north end off of Gould Road and uh, another road that's escaping my mind right now, um, Sherman, Sherwood Court. Uh, we did have our dozer that was operating on the west side yesterday move up into there to establish dozer line behind those homes. Um, I mentioned to somebody yesterday that hand line is constructed typically three to four feet wide. Dozer line is six to 10 feet wide. So we really wanted to make sure we had a really good safe control line established in behind the homes to put those residents at ease for the fire operation last night. So uh, with that, this morning, our air tanker is flying the fire again, continuing to hit hot spots, um, continuing to work areas that could be problematic, and, and we're coordinating that resource as such. Our helicopter also will be back out over the fire here, uh, continuing to do observation and uh, bucket work uh, where necessary. Um, we have approximately 50 firefighters engaged uh, hand crews, engines, and that one dozer uh, patrolling, monitoring, dropping uh, those ash trees and other trees that are problematic. We refer to those as snags. Um, trying to secure the containment lines and trying to make sure this thing uh, stays in place today, uh, which is what we were hoping for yesterday. If you want to walk me through the map real quick. I sure can. <laughs> So if you remember from yesterday, this was our original containment lines. Um, that burnout operation that took place yesterday, kind of on this west side, what we're calling Division Alpha, was very effective. Very effective, uh, little to no control issues reported on this side of the fire at this time. Um, they're patrolling this area now, securing it uh, deeper and deeper into the fire, making sure that that's, that's doing really, really well. When the fire spotted over, it spotted into this area, and what you can't tell from this map, but there's actually a ridge line that kind of runs up the middle through here, and it started kind of backing downhill, so backing fire is lower intensity than head fire, and it was definitely a problem in that area. Um, I'll mention the spot fire was detected by our helicopter. It was uh, sheltered by the smoke from the fire because the wind was blowing smoke in that direction. So uh, at some point, the helicopter, while operating, detected that fire, and then we uh, engaged our plan that I discussed a few moments ago. So you can see up Echo Lake Road, this is where the hand crews went in, constructed hand line. There's a, a trail in here, I'm not sure of the name uh, offhand, but they followed a trail to the top of the ridge line, and uh, just, that was where the easy work was, and then the hard work was from this trail all the way up to Gould Road, or effectively Gould Road, all handline construction in there with those tools. Okay, over here, Sherwood Court, back here, that's where that dozer was working. And then the hand crews went in there with those tools and also uh, leaf blowers. Leaf blowers are a very effective tool for us, I didn't mention yesterday. Um, so that's where we're at, that's where the fire is. Um, the fire is pretty much all within this red area you see, it's either, um, has burned or is uh, burning, but we're hoping to find out real quickly here this morning that, that our plan is, is solid, gonna hold, and uh, and be effective for us. Questions? Any questions? I guess, like uh, we did yesterday, from this side over, so that was easier. Yes. So 
right now we only have one residence that's under uh, evacuation order. Um, the rest are uh, just kind of monitoring and obs observing. If we feel that that becomes a concern, we will notify uh, the, the proper channels immediately. There's a residence on uh, Macapin Road that was evacuated. For the weekend ahead, um, statewide, what do you what do you expect the fire conditions to look like? So, the, as we, there's rain in the forecast for Sunday and Monday, I believe maybe overnight. Um, it, it's becoming a less and less chance as we get closer and closer to that time frame. Um, I guess something to mention. Uh, we may get this fire contained, but it will take significant rainfall to officially determine this fire out. Uh, probably an inch plus of rain over the whole fire area. Okay, so um, within the fire perimeter, there's going to be some smoke and smoldering here for until probably we receive that rainfall. Uh, since the fire is approximately 970 acres it's essentially impossible for us to hit every single smoldering and smoking uh stumps uh and logs and things of that nature so what we're focusing on is the perimeter outer perimeter of the fire the outer edge so that's where all of our crews will be working that's where our concern is if we have interior smokes as we call it then uh that's going to be here for a little while we'll continue to monitor that but uh, the, the containment lines and the perimeters is where our efforts are being focused. Um, yes. Uh, can you tell us if the backfiring is going to work in the conditions you're in? Right. So how backfiring works is you, if we consume the fuel, right, the, the forest floor, the leaf litter and everything that's there, before the fire gets there, once the fuel is consumed by fire, the fire effectively goes out. So that's the intention of back burning. So what happens is the bulk of the fire during the backfiring operation consumes that fuel. And then the residual smoke at fire is the heavier fuels. Heavier fuels being larger trees, larger brush, um, the fuel that consumes more quickly, we call flashy fuels, would be grass, leaves, pine needles, twigs, you know, just like when you're starting a campfire, the, the smaller stuff that you start with. There have been absolutely no injuries reported at this time on this fire. So yesterday, Eric, yeah. we talked about 650 acres, now we're talking 900. Correct. How do you stop it? Okay, so what we believe happened yesterday and, and kind of going off that ember thing we talked about yesterday in the spot fires, when this, when the head of the fire, remember I talked yesterday, let me just go back to the map. Remember I talked yesterday we were doing a backfire off this control line? The head of the fire, right, so the fire hadn't consumed all that area we talked about yesterday. The head of the fire, which is the most active part of the fire, was probably in this area when this burnout operation came in line with it. As the burnout operation rounded its corner back to the west side of Echo Lake, there was a lot of energy in here. There was a lot of fire, a, 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 a lot, a lot of fire. We were getting uh, reports of embers, uh, not embers, but smoke and ash up in this area, upwind of the fire. So it's likely that one of those embers, you know, which could have been, you know, very, very tiny, uh, maintain enough heat to land in this area of unburned fuel and start the new fire, right? So as the embers get further and further away, they cool down, they, they, they aren't hot enough to start a new ignition. But, you know, with the amount of uh, convection that was coming off that fire yesterday, the updrafting of the wind, um, you know, you could get embers, you could get pine, entire pine cones on fire flying through the air. And, and, and a larger ember takes longer to cool. So that's it, it likely to be what occurred here. I just want to make it clear. Are you, uh, is it the operation, the background, is that sort of the embers like that, that procedure fly out to the other side? Or is it not? 
now, now. So, okay. so fire generates its own heat. It's called convection. It's the uplifting of all that heat upward and outward, right? You know, the campfire, smoke goes upward and outward. When there's other fire introduced in the area, it just generates more energy, more heat. So, and also in this area, the fuels are uh, mountain laurel, and mountain laurel fuels are very oily, like thick oily leaves, and even if it's dry, that oil uh, kind of maintains in the leaf, and it, they, they burn with high, high intensity. Kind of similar to like chaparral that you would see in, in Southern California. Can I ask a question that's a little off? Uh, with so much of this forest being burned, how about the wildlife, and particularly maybe you know, this is black bear country? Do they wake up a little earlier, or are they out? Are they concerned about maybe more bears? Well, it's interesting you raise that question because I asked that of our staff when I got here yesterday. Um, you know, it's been warm for over a week now. Bears are up and about by and large, I would expect. Um, some of the staff did report hearing, hearing bears or seeing some bears kind of later in the day, the day before. And um, we saw some deer moving when we were up in the helicopter. Those animals are typically perceiving the fire and getting out ahead of it, moving out of the way of it um, as it's moving through the forest. This fire moved quickly from our perspective yesterday, but for an animal to perceive it and start to get out of the way, they're sensing the smoke like we are. Um, so we're not you know, perceiving, detecting, seeing any significant impacts to, to wildlife. Certainly this changes their habitat for a moment in time, but once this fire um, is fully out and we get the opportunity for it to start to green up, it actually will be helpful in the long run to the forest because it's exposing those mineral soils, it's exposing that seed bank. We're going to see greening up in this forest space. We are going to see some dead and dying trees as a result of the forest, but those environmental conditions are helpful in a broad context to the wildlife that live in this forest. So this, this fire isn't significantly damaging from a wildlife and habitat standpoint. And again, the animals are getting up and moving out of the way um, in advance of the fire. So one of the things that um, we want to clarify a little bit, if you could visualize from a bird's eye view how this terrain looks. Um, there's a lot of ridges and valleys. There's a lot of rock faces. There's um, a significant variation in the types of vegetation that are present. Some of that vegetation is starting to green up. Some of that vegetation is dead. So as a fire travels through that area and that topography changes, it changes the intensity of the fire. As John mentioned, the fire burns into a pocket of large ash trees that are dead. When those ash trees die, they become like paper, okay? And then that can send those embers burning uh, and long distances and starting new fires. Um, so one of the things that we do with our backfiring operations is we conduct them at night. Now it's dangerous because these same dead ash trees that are burning and sending embers, they're falling down. They may fall, okay? Last night, guys were working on their burnout operations. They were on Echo Lake Road and burning branches are falling out of trees and starting new fires. But we're there, we're patrolling, we're mopping up, we're paying attention to that kind of stuff. And night operations are really effective because the wind dies down and diminishes and the humidities come up. So the fire control is much safer and is more effective in what we're trying to do. So we think now today that we have a really good handle on this. We're gonna take a flight now. We'll update again at 2.30 this afternoon. And um, I think we'll be in really good shape with our plan. What time did you find the fire on the other side of the lake last night? Uh, it was late yesterday afternoon. Uh, as Eric said, some of, uh, because there's a valley there and because the lake water's a little bit of cool, cooler, it was pulling the smoke down off of the ridge. Um, that sheltered and shadowed the east side of Echo Lake. We had our helicopter up and the helicopter observed, and that was about four, four o'clock yesterday that afternoon. That I'm not sure. I'm sorry, what was the question? 
How big is what? How big, how big is the lake where you think the Indoors may have traveled as well? That's a half mile wide. So there's a scale at the bottom of the map. It looks to be approximately one half mile. Across. Across the lake, from where the fire was to the new fire. For the duration of the weekend, the people living in town, close to the area, yep. should they stay in town? I mean, is there reason that the smoke will continue to spread out? Well, the, the smoke will lessen in the days to come, and certainly with rain. So, um, that, that's pretty much where we're at with that. I, I'm not exactly sure how much smoke there will be, but um, the smoke will lessen as we get further and further out from today. Right now, there's no danger for anyone who may have some problems. I, I really can't speak to that. If they have Chief. respiratory problems, stay inside. Yeah, so if they have respiratory problems, we just recommend they stay inside, close their windows, um, and things of that nature. All right, so generally we try not to exceed a two to one work rest ratio, meaning firefighters are expected to work for 16 hours straight with eight hours off. Last night we were unable to achieve that goal. Some firefighters worked almost 24 hours straight and actually I believe a few are working uh, over 24 hours at this point. So yeah, so fatigue is setting in, it is an issue something we need to mitigate and be concerned with. That's why we have some of our partners here from EMS. They're uh, in place to assist us should we have any medical emergencies uh, and, and deal with those appropriately. What is the churches that they're, they're, they're digging, those 15 or 20, uh, those 20 guys that have been making work, how small are they? Are we talking, I know this is a grocery drive, are we talking like a half mile worth of trench? How, how big are those trenches that they're digging? Five inch. All the rest. So I can't speak to how long, but the, all that hand line was constructed all the way up this uh, this area to the lake, to the west side of Echo Lake, and from this point all the way up and over to Gould Road, and then to the east side of Echo Lake. That hand line was constructed in that area. That's it was a significant amount. All by hand. It must be so. All by hand, reinforced with. Uh, the bulldozer and leaf blowers. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry, question? I didn't want to bug you, but road closures without the same, are they maintaining the same roads closed? Are there going to be any roads closed? So, Echo Lake Road is the only road that is closed at this time. Um, providing we have no impacts of smoke or other safety concerns, there should be no anticipated changes.